Hello, it's, it's Friday, August the uh, 22nd, and welcome to Sociology of Health at Soci 3313 online. I am uh, Steve Blanchard, and I am the instructor in the course, and uh, I look forward to working with you uh, this semester. Um, this course, just I'm going to what I want to do for the next few minutes is go through the syllabus, but let me say that this course is really takes an upstream perspective and there's some layout in here in the syllabus including a, an African parable that will help you understand what we're talking about here. It's an upstream perspective on health. Health that we do in this course is population health. Rates and proportions and prevalences. Not individual level health but population health. How does the health of non-Hispanic whites compared to African Americans compared to Hispanic whites? That sort of thing. And we might look at the um, say some particular uh, mortality rate, let's say the mortality rate of non-Hispanic whites, and then we go upstream and look at the behaviors of the non-Hispanic whites that might have led to that rate, and then we go farther upstream and look at the context, the social, environmental, neighborhood context of non-Hispanic whites to see if there's something about that context that would have led to those behaviors that would have led to the mortality rate that we see in front of us. So we look at the rates and those are indicators, as you will see as we go through this, these are indicate the semester, these are indicators of behavior uh, upstream and farther upstream context. All right? And so in the other way, if we think about it, for upstream context, and we're looking at context around us, then as those contexts become more familiar with contextual dynamics, looking at those contexts, we'll be able to predict downstream what likely will be the behaviors and what likely will be the health profile. So that's pretty much what we're up to this semester. Take a look at the African parable uh, and the uh, link to upstream doctors that are on the syllabus, and uh, and you'll see more, get, become more understanding of what we're going to do. But that's basic, basically the principle. Um, one thing you might uh, of interest here, um, the uh, one of the opening pieces in the course review here, is the medical college admissions test in the spring of 2015 requires students applying for medical school to have a grounding in sociology, and that's because of the population-based contextual um, perspective on health. It is a way for the doctors to become, as they become practitioners, uh, when they have a patient in front of them. Uh, to be holistic and see not just the physiology of the patient and how to respond with medicine to change and tweak and improve that physiology, but in a sense to look over the shoulder of the patient in front of them upstream to look at the behaviors and farther upstream to look at the context and get a holistic view of what brought that patient in front, uh, what brought that patient with that illness to them at that point. So that's one way that it's important. The other way is, is that if the physician knows something about the upstream perspective and context, the physician will know something about what are the, uh, the enablers and, shall we say, the prohibitors in the context in terms of following the physician's regimen. So uh, it's a, there's a reemergence in social sciences and sociology in particular, and, and particularly in the area of health, and that's one measure of it in terms of the MCAT, the Medical College Admission Test. There are some links here I want you to take a look at over the next uh, two, or three, uh, two or three weeks. And um, I'll be posting some stuff on the website. If not uh, later today, it's already 1 o'clock. I may not get it all done this afternoon, Friday. But on Monday, I'll post some stuff up there and let you know that it's there through announcements and I'll be sending you email. Um, we're going to um, take a look at this from... Uh, kind of a statistical way, but not do statistics, so don't worry about that. Uh, we're going to think of this as Y is the outcome. Y equals XI plus WI plus ZI. So what does that mean? Y is why does mortality vary? Y is why the outcome vary of mortality. Why does it vary? Then we go across the equal sign and we look at XI, which are characteristics of individuals. It varies because of age or something. Um, and then we go to WI and we look at maybe it varies in the context of groups. Maybe there's something about African Americans health that's different from non-Hispanic white health. And then we go farther up the equation, which is like going upstream, to ZI, which is characteristics of neighborhoods. What is there about neighborhoods that influence health? For example, 
if someone, a family, lives in a neighborhood with few parks or no parks, no lighting in the streets, it's hard for them to get out, exercise, and do the sorts of things that would help them to improve their health. So there may be a physical, environmental kind of contextual thing that's going on that creates uh, adverse behaviors because they don't walk and creates uh, a worse outcome, let's say, in diabetes than they might otherwise have if they had an environment upstream where they could walk. So um, that's y equals xi plus wi plus zi is a way that we sort of statistically capture in that framework in an abstract way to organize our thoughts. And we'll flesh those things out as we go through the semester. For example, we might think uh, in terms of social determinants, social influence, which you'll see how that's laid out here in the syllabus in a preliminary way, we may think that one of the key variations be causes, let's say, upstream of the variation mortality is the variation in income. Some people got income resources and some don't. So there are differentials in mortality. Well, that's probably so. Um, and for sure we know that's the case because uh, our country, the United States, has an enormous amount of wealth, but it's not equally distributed by any means. And we have a health outcomes that reflect that. A few of us do really well and a lot of us don't do so well at all. Or maybe do better than others, but a large number don't do well at all. The, the income stuff doesn't really explain it that well. If you go a little bit, look at it a little bit differently, maybe to the extent that we don't have good, uh, any, that we don't have good equality then uh, we don't have good cohesion. If we don't have good cohesion, social cohesion, if a neighborhood is not socially cohesive, there's probably stress there. There's not good interpersonal relations. There's not good associational behavior. People may not be trustful one another. They may be stressed out by that. If you're stressed out by that, your autoimmune system can be impaired and it make you susceptible to uh, infection and, and it can lead to health. So it could be something to have to do with social cohesion. Well, if we're not Income, any if we're not income equality, we're probably going to be uh, not. We're going to be have a lack of cohesion, and um, one element of that cohesion may be social networks, sort of the fabric of society. If we're cohesive, we've got good networking out there, both within family and across the workplace, and other things like that. Sort of a fabric that sustains each one of us individually and the community. So we're going to look at income uh, inequality and how that influences health social cohesion and how that influences health, and social networks and how that influences social cohesion influences health. So we're going to be looking at this a number of, way, a number of ways and all within that equation. Um, but more about that as we uh, go through this. And I'll be doing uh, YouTube videos um, every week. And uh, this is just the introduction one. And uh, talking about this, I'll be doing Prof's Notes and um, and we'll, we'll be doing readings. This is our principal book, and you'll see that as you go through the syllabus. Um, discussion, let me just mention discussion. It's real important. You'll see in the syllabus, it counts a lot. Discussion's important. We are online. Ordinarily, what we would do is we'd be sitting around a table in a classroom somewhere, or we'd circle the chairs and sit around and talk face-to-face, ojo a ojo, body heat and all of that, about these themes of sociology of health. We don't have that opportunity in an online class. So our virtual table, our virtual undergraduate seminar table is a discussion. It's important that you participate. We want to create the classroom virtually through discussion. And I'm going to push you a little bit and make requirements on the numbers of times you per, uh, participate in discussion meaningfully um, in each segment. And you'll see that in the syllabus and we'll talk more about that over this next week and as time goes by. I'll be up there uh, mixing it up with you every week also. Not just up there monitoring how you're doing this stuff. That's okay. That's something I have to do as an instructor, I suppose. But really just like engaging you. Your perspectives on health are going to be important to me just like mine to you and, and your perspectives to one another. So uh, get up there and get into it. Uh, the student uh, learning outcomes. We have three program level outcomes you'll see. Uh, one is about the sociological imagination. And that's uh, my say my own Steve Blanchard's personal narrative. How is it that I have become who I am? Over the course of my lifetime, I've passed through numerous contexts. I'm embedded in context now. Family, my gender, uh, you know, the communities I've been in, uh, the schools I've gone to, my friendships. Uh, I've been influenced and have influenced, but I've been influenced by contexts through which I've passed. Sociological imagination is take a look at who each of us is 
and um, get a sense of the imagination of the sociological contextual influence on the evolution of our individual narratives. And that's, a, that's important and even in a population-based course like this because if you think about how population health varies, say, from one race to another, or race and ethnicity, then the aggregate narratives of the Hispanic population must express in some way the differential of health relative to the health of African Americans or non-Hispanic whites. So we want to think imaginatively and contextually and sociologically about that. Uh, sociological methods, you'll get plenty of, uh, of that in this course, as you will in any of our sociology courses, about methods and perspectives. Um, how to uh, think about qualitative methods and quantitative methods. We won't be doing too much. Most of this you'll be consuming articles and talking about the methods that the artists are the artists. Well, they are, this is artistic. Uh, the authors are um, employing, and we'll talk about that. You're more of a consumer of methods and statistics in this class. And then the uh, more course specific, you'll be looking at how to look at the difference between, understand the difference between population-based health and individual level health. You will become, as you graduate from this course, a population health diagnostician, much like an individual uh, practitioner, clinician, health clinician, diagnoses an individual, you'll have the capacity and capability to diagnose a population health. So that's a good place to be. Uh, course requirements, you'll have four small written assignments, one for each of the segments that we'll do. You'll select an article that I'll give you or you'll offer an article for me to say okay uh, from the literature out there that you find and you will write a like a summary of it and put it in the context of the course and you'll see how all that is and how to do that's laid out in the syllabus and we'll talk more detail about that. Uh, there's no final exam, there are no exams, there are those four papers and a comprehensive. The comprehensive will be to tie the whole thing together uh, on some theme. Uh, you can take a theme of one or uh, the other of your smaller papers and elaborate it out into a comprehensive essay. But we'll talk about that as, um, as we get, a, certainly by the time we get to halfway through the course. There are four assignments, and um, let's see if I get my um, uh, four assignments. The written assignments are 10% uh, each for 40%. Your Blackboard discussion is 30% and your comprehensive essay is 30%. So uh, each of the assignments is 10% and again they're laid out on how to do that and we'll talk more about it both by uh, Prof's notes and by uh, YouTube video uh, as they come close and one of them will be coming close in about a, a month or so. Okay, well, in other words I'll be making that assignment next week and we'll be working on it for the next two or three weeks. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Attendance policy is really based on discussion. That's the only way we can measure it. Follow my scheme for participating. I require you to participate a certain number of times, pushing a little bit. But really, it's the idea that to participate is to create that vir virtual discussion seminar. And that's really where we want to be. Um, atten uh, uh, if you have a, uh, a disability of some sort or some issue related to uh, course participation or the course, please let me know and um, I'll make some adjustments best I can. Uh, but let me know right away so that I, uh, you and I can get on with that. As far as dishonesty and plagiarism is, that's always in the syllabus and anymore it seems to me that it has, it's often has to do with, it's inadvertent and it has to do with thinking that well because it's out there on the wide world web or however you call it, you just go up there and get it, it belongs to me, it belongs to the world. Anything that you retrieve from the uh, web to insert in a paper that you're doing is the same sort, it requires the same attribution and citation as you would if you retrieved it from a book or an article. So be mindful of that. And that's really what that piece is about. Um, you'll see as you go through the course calendar uh, how we're organized, segment one, segment two, uh, demographic background, the outcomes, the why. And then we look at um, uh, income inequalities, and then we look at social cohesion, then we look at social networks, just like I was talking about a minute ago to make our argument. Um, this is the text. It's a good text. You're going to see some uh, URLs or web referrals at the on the front page of the um, syllabus to go check out. Uh, this is the these two individuals, Michael Malmo and Richard Wilkinson, are premier in the world when it comes to social determinants. Is a strong word. Uh, social influences on health. Now, it seems new to us, and, but it's been around in epidemiology and social health 
back since the 19th century. It has reemerged in the last 10 years, and it's really just the contextual influences on human behavior, particularly those behaviors that lead to health outcomes. So, um, I am a community health practitioner. I do this stuff all the time out there with community health assessments, community health program development. Um, I enjoy doing this. This is a companion case, uh, uh, course, by the way, with 4323, which is about why. It's about the uh, why is in the demographic outcomes. Um, so, and I think two or three of you are in both courses, and that's a cool thing. So, uh, this I I do this stuff all the time. I'm just letting you know I'm uh, I've got a lot of experience, and I think we're going to have a good time this semester. And I'm looking forward to working with you. And um, so, this is Friday afternoon. There's a weekend coming up. Y'all be safe out there. And I look forward to working with you, and I'll talk to you next week.